Right, so good <coughs> evening class. So today, um, for the final term, we're going to discuss about the specialized allied services, which is the UAP document uh, 203. So let's uh, read first the introduction. So it defines here that architecture is the blending of aesthetics, function, space, and materials results from the application of the skills of many people. So the keyword here is it's, it's the result of the skills of many people which means that architecture is something that is produced through effective collaboration with different uh, professionals, especially that uh, technology and um, science and engineering have come a long way. Okay. So today, the environmental design professions of which architecture as a lead part are involved with a total commitment to improving the way of life. So it only means that the practice of architecture is the first among equals. It doesn't mean that you're above your other professionals. It means that you you, you are the first who's going to do uh, the design as that is as the as the uh, main designer. Okay. You are all equally important in a project. So that's the spirit of collaboration. So the architect's main responsibility his client is to produce a structure that will house the activity it was intended for, as well planned, soundly constructed, aesthetically satisfying within the financial limitations of the project. So it just means that it's your main responsibility to the client that whatever that you're going to produce or design, that it is of course strong and it it um, answers the needs of the client. So the architect's responsibility to society is to make sure that the structure alone, that, that not the structure alone, but also its physical environment can enhance the lives of all people. So he, release, he relies not only to purely design and build professions, but to allied professions as well, uh, to achieve totality in design. So we have here the design services, which... Uh, uh, require specialization for the specialized allied services. So we have interior design, acoustic communications and electronic engineering, landscape design, physical planning, and comprehensive planning. So remember that when you are uh, when you do interior architectural interiors, it would be better for a project if you work also and collaborate well with an interior designer as well to enhance the space. Of course, in ITMB, you should also uh, collaborate with acoustic engineers and communication engineers for the project. And landscape design also for landscape architect. Physical planning, comprehensive planning, you, you, you work with um, environmental planners, urban planners also. So let's go into interior design services. So in the design of the structure, the architect works on a concept. For the, reali for the realization of this concept, the architects build structure making both exterior and interior spaces contribute to the total design concept of the structure. So he designs and develops interiors of buildings and residences such that they contribute to the physical, visual, and intellectual comforts of the users. So the expertise. Depending on the complexity of the project, the architect may get assistance from consultants whose advice may be needed in the detailing of interior elements. So if you have a project it's mostly on interiors, it's it's best that you work with interior designers as your consultant or your go professionals in the design. So the scope of services, the architect upon designing a structure houses specific activities by controlling the spaces where these activities are to take place. The various spaces are designed to make the sp space fit the specific mood and the required activity. So due to the discovery of new products and equipment, interior design has become a field of specialization. As such, it offers the following. So these are the following that's offered by interior design. So it's in the prescription of furniture interior design finishes appropriate for different activities and spaces and prepare furniture and furnishing layout. B, preparing the design and schedule of furniture, giving their dimensions, specifications, and locations. C, assist the client in conducing bids or negotiations with furniture, fabricators, and other suppliers. 
the checked and approved samples of materials and shop drawings of furniture, furnishings, fixtures, and decor items. Then conducts final inspection and approval of furniture and other items. That's for item E. For the payment for projects including extensive detailing such as furniture design, built-in equipment, and special fittings, the architect is paid 15% of the cost of work. The fee may however vary from 12 to 20% depending on the complexity of the work to be undertaken. So if the project is more complicated and as well it will depend also on your uh, credential and uh, credibility as an architect, you could charge higher than 15%. So the fee of the architect is stipulated above includes the fee of the consult consultant working with the architect. So should the client hire separate services of the consultant, the fee of the said consultant shall be on the account of the client and paid directly by the client. In such a case, the fee of the architect for coordinating the work and relating the work of the consultant, the design concept of the architect, will be 5% of the cost of the work. So this means that if the client will hire separately, so the client will pay for the um, uh, professional fees of that consultant and then as the architect you are um, subject to a coordination fee of 5% since you'll be working and collaborating with that uh, consultant that is hired by the client. So here is an important definition of what cost of work is. <clears throat> Cost of work means the total cost of the items which were either designed, specified, or procured by the architect and his consultant for the client and were used or installed in the interiors of the building. So the architect shall be paid on the following schedule. So when you uh, submit the preliminary design, that's 30% of the fee. Submission of the design, and the design 50%, and the completion of the project 20% of the fee. So this is the recommended fee structure when you are... Uh, dealing in interior design. For acoustic communications and electronic engineering services, so let's uh, discuss first this introduction. So throughout history, one of the limiting criteria in the building design has been the need to control sound in an enclosed space. Due to the continuing evolution of products and techniques in sound control, communications, and electronics, there is a wider flexibility in the design of the interior environment. Thus, the architect, together with his consultants, are able to build an environment that answers the sophisticated demands of varied activities within an enclosed space. <clears throat> so, the architect is the prime professional commissioned by the client to design the structure and all its utilities and to coordinate the works of all allied professionals involved in the project. <clears throat> As acoustic communication and electronic engineering fields are fields of specialization, the allied professionals who perform these services will serve as consultants to the architect and the client. So the architect shall coordinate their works and make certain that their inputs will comply to the requirements of the project and shall be compatible with the architectural design concept of the architect. So this is the most especially true when you are designing theaters. So you have to work with acoustic engineers to make sure that um, the sound system is alright throughout the, the theater. So you work uh, with them, they are going to be your consultant, um, you're going to show them the floor plans and discuss with them. And then there, there's going to be a lot of collaboration. Okay. So the scope, so the architect and the consultant will prepare the drawings and specifications for acoustic designs, the acoustical treatment, control the sound, the sound reinforcement sound insulation, and the communication system. Then also prepare the specifications of the electronic equipment, assist the client in the bidding or negotiation of the work, check and approve sample of materials and equipment, conduct final inspection of work and equipment, assist the client to evaluate the amount to the contractor. So I think the payment, uh, let me check, uh, it's still the same, it's 30, 50, 20. So the payment uh, schedule for this one is just the same with the interior design. It's around 10 to 15 percent. Okay. But if the client will hire uh, directly another consultant, uh, the client will be the one to pay for it. And then the client will just pay you 5 percent 
as coordination fee. Okay. But if you're going to be the one who will uh, hire the consultant, then the 10 to 15 percent uh, charge, the fee for that said consultant is already included there. Okay. So you decide. Now let's uh, move into the landscape design services. So basically, I think the fee structure, uh, how you're going to be paid is just the same. But these are just different specialized allied services. So arising from this concept of the total environment, the architect is not merely concerned with the structure he creates, but the surrounding space as well. He studies the structure in relation with the existing environment and then consequently designs the surrounding areas of the structure so that both the structure and the environment act as one. So normally, landscaping of small projects can be done by the architect and his staff. If the project, however, is big in scale, the architect may hire other professionals as consultants. So the scope of services for this one, so the prepares the general ground modeling plan and planting layout, prepares drawing specifications of needed utility lines, schedule of shrub, trees, and other plants. So this is an expertise of the landscape architects. So should be able to identify the different species prepare details of landscaping elements, assist the client in conducting bids or negotiations with landscape contractors, checks and approve samples of materials, conducts final inspection, and assist the client to evaluate the amount due to the contractor. So this is another service. The payment is the same, 10 to 15%. And in that 10 to 15%, the fee for the, the professional fee of the consultant is already included there. But if the client will hire separately he'll be the, the client will be the one to pay for uh, those uh, for the professional fee but you'll be given five percent coordination fee as the architect okay so it's still the same that's 30 50 20 so we re re remember this well class so let's move into uh, physical planning so planning as we know uh, today started in physical planning So for physical planning services, so plan, um, the architect is not merely concerned with the structure, he is concerned with its relation with the images surrounding as well. So uh, in planning for building sites, you have industrial estates, shopping centers, etc. So he studies the possible structures that will be seated there and their relation to the other structure, the surrounding environment, their effect and impact on the neighboring areas. So if the architect is commissioned to do physical plans for a specified site, he has to study human behavior and activities, look into the city's economic systems, its laws and regulations, tax structure, the city's infrastructure, utilities on a, as a whole, everything that will have a bearing on the project. So when the architect is exposed to all these aspects in sufficient detail, he is engaged in the practice of a specialized service of physical planning. So. By definition, physical planning is the art, so it's also an art and science, the use of land and the siting of buildings and communication roads to ensure the maximum practical degree of economy, social amenities, convenience, and aesthetics. So it is approached to a mechanism which integrates in time and space the following components. First, you have the physical, which pertains to the world of material things. You have the social, the condition of people, and the economic and administrative between the science of management and resources. So, sir, this is the, the role of the architect planner. So, all ideas, concepts, needs, and data eventually have to be translated into physical plans before they can be implemented. So, it is the architect who provides a two-dimensional, uh, a dimensional perspective to a two-dimensional plan. So, if there's a two, uh, it's a plan, it's the architect that provides a dimensional perspective to it. So, by virtue of the architect's training and expertise in coordinating the works of a multidisciplinary team, the architect becomes the logical prime professional responsible for the direction of the team efforts to do the planning work. Then, another is that the planning service of the architect is separate and distinct from the architect's regular service. The latter being concerned with the production of a structure, so this one, building, while its attendant sophistications and complexities, while the former is concerned with the general quality setting in okay, the physical planning. Uh, 
for people, activities, buildings, and other natural and man-made phenomena. So depending on the complexity of the project, the architect may hire additional consultants usually looking about uh, site planners, landscape, uh, no, not landscape, we're talking about that before, environmental planners, urban planners for this one. So then the architect is commissioned to do the physical planning for industrial estates, commercial institutional government centers, sports complexes, tourist centers, resorts, amusement parks, educational campuses, housing subdivisions, and the like. The services are the follows. You confirm with the client with the project requirements, and you're going to uh, generate the sufficient database which reliable projections and analysis can be made for translation to physical design. To examine the laws, ordinances, rules, and re regulations. Prepare concept development plans and report from relevant information. Prepare scaled preliminary plans. Prepare budgetary estimate of cost. Undertake modifications, revisions, and changes as may be required. Prepare final plans, reports, and specifications. So I think uh, what, what makes the physical planning uh, lot different from what we have discussed before is, is that the schedule of fees are uh, quite different uh, from um, the former specialized allied services. So these are the types of uh, projects for this one. Then the basic rate for first 50 hectares is uh, 5,000 per hectare. Then, if you're over 50 hectares up to 100, that's 250,000 plus 4.5 per hectare in excess of 50 hectares. It's 100 to 200 hectares, that's 475 plus 4,000 per hectare in excess of 100 hectares. Then, if it's over uh, 200 hectares, that's 875,000 plus 3,000 per hectare in excess of 200 hectares. So, I think this is still based on 1979 purchasing value of the peso and according here this is going to be some adjustments due to inflation and other factors so I think it be much bigger especially now that it's already 2024 so subdivision planning for housing and properties in Metro Manila so it's different that's 3,000 per hectare then it's over 100 to 200 that's 300,000 plus 2,300 per hectare in excess of 100 hectares if it's 200 hectares, over 200 hectares, it's 550,000 plus 2,000 per hectare in excess of 200 hectares. And we also have type 3, subdivision planning in the properties uh, located in other localities. Uh, beside those from type 2, and that's 2,000 per hectare, so I think it's uh, a lot lower. Then for 100 to 200, that's 200,000 plus 1,5 per hectare in excess of 100. Then if it's over 200, that's 350,000 plus 1,000 per hectare in excess of 200 hectares. So the rates typically above is based on the assumption that the land to be developed is moderately flat. If the land is rugged with steep terrain, the fee shall increase by 30%. So if the, if the terrain is different or difficult, so there's an adjustment of 30%. So there's an other conditions for this one. The architect may undertake the site planning of a project requiring a composite arrangement of several building envelopes no contiguous site, moderate size of 3 hectares or less. Any commission of fiscal planning for larger magnitude or complex structures should be done by the architect with several years of experience in planning or has additional academic training in planning. Should most importantly possess administrative, technical, and managerial ability aside from equitable social commitment. So should other services be required by the project, such as environmental studies, visibility study, market analysis, movement systems, impact analysis, and others, Paid services should be performed by an architect acting as the prime professional of the team. So the cost of for environmental sur uh, study surveys, site investigation, and titling of the parts of land shall be on account of the owner, of course. The detailed planning of building and landscaping elements is not part of the physical planning services and shall be treated uh, separately. I think we already talked about the uh, landscape part. So the preparation of detailed engineering drawings and specifications on roads, drainage, sewage, power and communication systems, additional fee of 4% of the cost of the development is to be charged. And I think this is the last one, the comprehensive planning service. So let me uh, just uh, read about the introduction. So in the planning discipline, the process of coming up with a plan is made more explicit. The gathering of data is made more scientific by the analysis. 
the synthesis of data with the use of certain scientific tools for analysis like statistics. The preparation of the final plan gives alternative options through the consideration of various factors such as social and economic cost benefits, forecasting of environmental consequences and the like. So comprehensive planning service is based on the concept of expanded planning service to include other activities necessary for the ha proper handling of the numerous components considered in the formulation of a master development plan. So this is the definition of the comprehensive planning service. Comprehensive planning service is the range of all service offered by the environmental planner from database gathering to environmental impact statements up to formulation of the master development plan. So I think you're going to work now with an environmental planner for this one. So in the formulation of the master development plan, the following considers are, uh, uh, components are to be considered just as the same the physical planning of the physical component, the economic component, and the social cultural component. And so have the transport, the transport component as well, then the legal and administrative component. So in the physical planning, if you remember, there's only three that's highlighted. That's the physical, economic, and social cultural. But in the comprehensive planning, we already have the transport and the legal and administrative component. So the architect is environmental planner. So right now, guys, there's already a, sp a separate discipline for this one. You have to take and uh, you have to study environmental planning and take the board exam to be called an environmental planner. So the architects, uh, the role of the architect is to synthesize and organize into a whole various information relating to the user's needs, user's perception and expectations, site and climatic factors, construction technology, materials, cost, and other information has qualified him to take the lead role in any undertaking that cut across various disciplines. So the comprehensive planning services is identify existing land use, resources, social behavior, and interaction, undertake environmental analysis, examine existing laws, and prepare concept development plans, policies, implementing strategies to arrive at the master development plan. If you're not an environmental planner, it's best to have a consultant, an uh, a licensed environmental planner to consult with this one. For the compensation of the fees, okay, it's not uh, explicitly as stated, uh, but the the, here is the professional fee plus expenses. The fee of the architect planner for the physical planning component is based on the schedule described in your fee document 20D, physical planning services. I think we already discussed that above for the physical planning. But the fee for the consultant, researches, and other pocket expenses are reimbursable to the architect. Okay. So, means that you just have to reimburse, uh, ask the client to reimburse the payment for this one. Okay, so I hope... Uh, that you learn something from the specialized allied services. I I think I have to admit that some of the text on my source is uh, the spelling is wrong or something is missing. But it's up to you guys to synthesize this um, and uh, understand um, the gist of UAP document 203. And if you have any further questions or clarifications, you can always approach me faculty office or you can send a message or a PM, PM in Facebook or in my email. So, I am guys and see you next meeting. God bless.